Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about black hole collisions and more specifically about a very unusual and unexplained mystery that still exists today where we're not entirely sure how some of the black hole collisions could even be possible. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. Now in the last few years we've discovered quite a lot of various black hole collisions and you can even find this beautiful video from LIGO that shows you um, visually what some of these collisions were. And the first one was actually the most surprising of them all. First of all it happened way way faster or way sooner than we expected. In other words it only happened just like a few days after the LIGO detector became operational and at the same time it involved two black holes that were kind of more massive than we expected them to be. Both of them were roughly around 30 masses of the sun and we didn't even think that such black holes could even technically exist. Not to mention that this was the first detection. Since then a lot more detections were done and today you can easily keep track of all of them on this website right here. This is known as Grace Database and it's an up-to-date and very detailed announcement site that shows you every single LIGO detection that can then be studied in more detail and in many cases results in either a detection of a black hole black hole collision like this one right here this is only from literally a day ago from when I'm making this video to other collisions such as for example between a neutron star and a black hole or between two neutron stars. On top of this you can even get an app uh, that's absolutely free to use that also shows you the same thing and notifies you when new collisions happen. So this is how far we've advanced in the last few years in terms of detecting gravitational waves from various sources out there in the universe. Now there is however a mystery and this mystery of course relates to the fact that we're just not entirely sure why we're seeing so many of these collisions and also why some of them are and also why some of them happen between black holes that are more massive than we expected them theoretically to be. And also a lot of these black holes kind of actually have a much higher spin as well. Now you might not really realize that in general black holes do spin. As a matter of fact it seems that every single black hole we've seen so far has at least a little bit of a spin. And in most cases this spin is way way higher than we predicted or expected. And the mass is higher. So there is something unusual going on with these black holes that we're detecting and it's also very difficult to explain why we're getting so many practically almost every day now. And so this is where another paper comes in and tries to explain all of this. And actually does a pretty good job in being very logical and very clear about what's probably happening and why we're seeing so many collisions. And to explain all of this we have to move right here into the accretion disk of a typical supermassive black hole. This is the one in the middle of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star. Now, as you can probably tell just from the actual shape of the accretion disk and the sheer size, a lot of things are happening here. A lot of things are colliding here and a lot of things are being created and destroyed. In a sense, this is uh, somewhat familiar to a much larger, much more massive version of a typical protoplanetary disk, such as for example a disk that our solar system was made from where the star in the middle is the source of the gravitational pull and everything orbits around it and as it does it collides creating larger and larger rocks and eventually resulting in the formation of planetoids and eventually planets and possibly even things like gas giants. Now all of these collisions are of course minuscule, they're not really that large in comparison to what's happening around a typical supermassive black hole. Here things would happen on a much much larger scale with a lot more impact and a lot more masses involved. And the scientists behind this paper believe that this is exactly what we're actually observing. We're observing collisions between really large really massive objects orbiting supermassive black holes and their study in a sense explains for why we're seeing these really massive black holes that we don't expect to see anyway and at the same time it explains why all of this happens so frequently and why many of these black holes have very very high spin. So if I were to try to recreate a very basic version of this accretion disk by using a model of Sagittarius A star and just a few stars orbiting around it and then of course placed a few uh, black holes here as well 
Eventually things will start colliding. When stars collide they will very likely produce a supernova and you're going to see it um, relatively quickly actually. But when the black holes collide you're not going to see it visually. However you are going to feel the gravitational effects. And because these things here are spinning and interacting and colliding and basically are creating a lot of various energy this is where you would expect to find black holes that would be more massive than usual because they've had previous collisions and also black holes that would be spinning a lot more, mostly due to the previous collisions and also due to transfer of momentum from the material nearby. And all of this actually does make quite a lot of sense. It explains why we're seeing so many of these collisions. So essentially probably most of them did not happen in the middle of the galaxy but actually happened very very close to the central black hole. And also it explains why these black holes are more massive. This also um, relates to a lot of other ideas where scientists actually suggested for many years that we expect a lot of black holes to orbit around the typical supermassive black hole and scientists even speculated that there are probably close to about 10,000 different black holes hiding very close to the Sagittarius A star supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. So somewhere in there, somewhere in this region, there are close to 10,000 different black holes. So it's really the accretion disk itself and the activity in the accretion disk that's probably creating all of this. And it makes even more sense because um, it sort of mimics what happens in a typical protoplanetary disk with all the collisions that create planets. So here, instead of basically creating planets, it creates much, much more massive, much larger objects. Now I'm still waiting for that supernova to happen, uh, eventually it will actually, but here you'll see that because of the interaction between these objects, eventually they're going to um, collide. By the way, if I were to disable all of the trails and names here, this is how all of this looks like. And you can kind of see some of the stars are slowly falling apart because of the gravitational effects of the black hole. So this is not as easily visible as it was when we had orbits enabled. So here without the orbits the accretion disk is barely even visible. Which of course suggests that this model that I created is very very small in comparison. It's super super minuscule. The actual accretion disk would have way way more matter and way way more collisions as well. And there we go. So this was the collision or the explosion I was waiting for. It took a few days uh, of simulation. Oh there we go. We actually have two and three and suddenly they're all colliding. So I think uh, there was some kind of a stability issue and wow this is incredible. So suddenly all of the stars started to collide because of the um, instability that was introduced uh, by some of the explosions. So this is kind of what happens in the center of many galaxies. This is actually something that we expect to happen quite a lot, although the supernova probably a lot more rare, but the collisions between black holes definitely happen quite a lot. And it's very likely we're going to detect even more of them as the uh, LIGO mission becomes more advanced and more importantly as new devices such as for example this gravitational wave detector known as LISA come out as well. So with all of these new facilities and all of these new techniques that we have we'll eventually definitely be able to answer all of the questions about gravitational waves understand them really really well but most importantly we'll probably even find a way to utilize them in daily life. For now it's still kind of theoretical, but we're getting there. We're going to find a way to use this and to create something very useful for humanity out of it. On this note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Check out the paper in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves sciences and space. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.